Alive 90.5. Now, with a bit of luck, I've got Brendan on the phone. As I said, multi-award winning singer-songwriter, 2023 Australian Country Music Awards, People's Award, Best Album of the Year. That's the album as I've been playing today, As the Road Unfolds, and Brendan's first albums were The Earth and Making, 7.58, and the rest has been history. Brendan, are you on? I am on, Dom. Sorry, mate. That's okay. <laughs> That's I right. thought the equipment wasn't going to play for me again. How are you, mate? I'm really, really good. Really good. Listen, uh, you're you're uh, you're hitting the charts. It's all happening for you, isn't it? It's uh, it's uh, fantastic the way you've just went ahead in leaps and bounds. Look, it's been really fun. <laughs> to be honest, it's been really good. Um, yeah. I, I, it's sort of taken me by surprise a little bit, um, and not that I haven't worked hard to get there, but you know, when when things start to gel and things start to click, and your name starts appearing on things and hitting charts, and you know, doing festivals and all that sort of, and thing. doing plenty of shows, sold yeah, out shows. You know, I noticed uh, shows are doing big things around the place. Yeah, I just did a run up at uh, Tamworth over Hats Off, so I think I did six or seven shows up there. So. Um, yeah, I'm a bit hoarse from the weekend. <laughs> my voice is recovering, but it was great fun. Lots of people up there. It was my first trip up to Hats Off at, um, um, to country in Tamworth. So uh, it was a really good experience, and now it just makes me look forward to Tamworth in January even more. Listen, just tell our audience a little bit about yourself, the, the past and, uh, you know, the glam rocking uh, past and the rock and roller you <laughs> wanted to be, and now you just settled down into country and you're doing it, it's all doing it for you. So just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, look, I, look, I, I had guitar heroes as I was growing up as a kid, you know, and probably like the Van Halens of the world and the Jimmy Pages, all those guitar gods. And when I started playing in pub rock bands when I was a young fella, you know, I did aspire to be that kind of, um, in that kind of band. Um, glam rock, yeah, I guess they were glam rock to an extent. Um, but I had a bit of a break. You know, I was born in a small country town in South Australia. Didn't really start playing music till I was about 16 because we just didn't have the cash to, to buy a guitar, to be honest. And there's four kids and dads working hard and all that sort of stuff. Uh, small country town, so you know, I managed to get some money together when I was about 16 to buy a guitar, and that's, that's when I started, and that's when I got into, you know, the more guitar rock hero type stuff, but I had a break out of music for quite a number of years when I was doing a, a full-time day job, a fairly hectic day job, and when I came back into music, which was in about 2014... Uh, I found that my my taste for writing had changed, and it was more about the story, the stories of life, story of love, story story of travel. You know, all so many stories to tell that my my songwriting just gravitated naturally into the country space. So that's a bit of an overview of, of how I got into the country space. Some of your right, some of your songs are amazing, but you actually had some great uh, supporting. You, you you're supporting a lot of good artists, weren't you? Boom Crash Opera and a few others. Yeah, well, when I first started, when I first started recording albums, I probably hadn't transitioned fully into country, and I was, I was still more so in that rock pop environment. And yeah, I was doing a bit. I mean, I record with the guys from Boom Crash and and Dale Braithwaite's band, and a whole pile of other great musicians. So you know, I naturally just um, started following those guys and started working with those guys from a live perspective, but. As as the albums went on, I'm up to I'm recording album number seven now. So as the albums have gone on, it's it's, it's gravitated more and more towards country in the country space. So now I'm doing the Tamworth and the Gimpies and stuff like that, you know, um, some rodeos and, and and whatever. So or rodeos, I'm not sure what you call it, rodeo <laughs> or a rodeo. But, yeah. yeah, listen. Yeah, so it has, since I've been playing a lot of your music, you have done you have uh, gone to one place I want to talk to you about. Tell me about your trip to Memphis, because I'm a great Elvis fan. So tell me a little bit about, but, but not Elvis, but about Memphis when you went out there, and went to Memphis and uh, checked it all out. Oh, Memphis was fantastic. It was just, there's a, you know, if you go from, um, I've been fortunate to be to New Orleans, I've been to Memphis and I've been to Nashville, and they're three different music scenes, three very different music scenes. Mm. You got a lot of jazz and, and 
the like down in New Orleans, and then you go to Memphis, and there's a lot of blues, and then you go to Nashville, and it's country. But it, there's a there's a grunginess about Memphis that is really exciting and just vibrant. Um, and look, you can't go to Memphis without getting in, into the Elvis thing because I I had no idea how big it still is. Um, <laughs> and I've never been a big Elvis fan. You know, I've never been a big Elvis fan. I've admired him, but you know, I have after going to Graceland and seeing the enormity of Graceland, not not the house itself, but the setup before the house with all the theatres and all the memorabilia and the amount of people that go there. Um, and then going into Sun Studios and standing in the studio that Elvis and Johnny Cash and um, Jerry Lee Lewis recorded those early huge hits in, you know, you just sort of, it smothers you. It's fantastic when you hear all the stories that, you know, that Elvis nearly didn't get a shot. Yeah. Because, you know, the the producer who produced him didn't like him. Well, that's that's and that's was, the story all the time about a lot of this uh, this entertainment business, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. But one so, last thing Memphis about... Is a, yeah, go on, go on, yeah. Bryn. Go on, you, you say, no, yeah. I'd just say Memphis is a fantastic place to visit, and I'd encourage anybody who loves music or whether you're into Elvis or not, it's just yeah. a fantastic place. Well, just we'll leave Elvis very quickly after this. I just want to say one thing. I remember when, because oh, I'm, I'm a bit of an Elvis freak, but I don't really flog it, you know, if you know what I mean. But he, yeah. when he put out his first album, uh, Elvis Country... It came out, went straight to number one in Elvis Country. But I tell you, if you ever want to listen to the true Elvis uh, playing country music or singing country music, his first album called uh, Elvis Country is amazing, and he's put a little track in between it as the tracks move, move on. But it's a fantastic album, and I, and I just remember that particular album of Elvis when he brought it out, and I remember it went basically within a day, week or two, it went to number one in, in the country charts. But just want something to re- tell you about. If you ever pick that album up, you'll love it, I think. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Now, one thing uh, I'm so proud of you, mate, about this album, the, as the road unfolds, 23 countries, chart-topping singles. How amazing is that? It's <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess there's the, you know, the, the internet has, has done a lot of damage to the music industry, but it's also given the music industry the opportunity to spread its wings and get to places where, you know, singer-songwriters, and particularly independent ones like myself, you know, never thought we would get to. So, yeah, it's, it's been it's been crazy. It's wonderful. It's great to see the country scene in Australia getting bigger and bigger. You know, like people remember country of the old-style country, but the, what I call country rock or modern country is fantastic, and uh, it's getting bigger and bigger isn't it? every day, you know, so it's, uh, you're, and you're getting some great art. I see Amber Lawrence is doing big things, isn't she, in the country scene yeah. too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it is. It's grown because it's so broad now. You know, it used to be country and western, and people still have a bit of a stigma about country and western. You know, from the the old days of country music, but country music now is nothing like it used to be, and it is so broad and it encompasses so many genres. You know, there's um, blues and alternative. It, Someone told me once there was 90-odd different genres within the country music industry. Um, so, you know, it's huge. It's huge in America, massive oh, in look, America. P- people don't realise in America country music is virtually number one. They don't really listen to a lot of the other stuff compared to country. You know, this is this no. is what amazes me. When, when you think of the world market, you know, America is gigantic. You know, and uh, I remember when um, a few people tell me they were over in the States, everybody just country mad <laughs> compared yeah, to some of the Yeah, others. yeah, yeah. Well, we've just recently been over there and, uh, as you know, through um, Memphis and a few other places, Dallas and Fort Worth. And Fort Worth is massive for country music too. We, we stopped in Fort Worth. There's, the, there's a <laughs> the stockyard area and just about every pub in the area and there'd be 50 pubs. I've all got country music playing, you know, from early in the morning till two in the morning, mm-hmm. early in the day till two a.m. And the next dancing morning. their legs off, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it really, it really never ceases to amaze me. Now, I just want to congratulate you, Australian Country Music People's Choice Award, and the best album of the year. Six uh, hits off that album. So well done, mate. 
Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, Dom. So what is happening? Uh, look, tell me a little bit about where you're playing because you've got some great uh, areas where you've got some gigs. But uh, for, for the future, what what's happening for the future? But also tell me what's happening in regards to your gigs. Sure. Well, as I said, I've just finished a run up in Tamworth on the weekend. Uh, now I've got a few weeks off, then I head to Gympie for the Gympie Muster. And then I've, I'm heading over to South Australia later on. Yeah, Lots yeah. of bits and pieces coming up live wise and um going into the studio next week to continue. I've had a bit of a break from recording, but uh, to continue putting the seventh album together. So we're we're three quarters of the way through that. So we're tidying up and choosing songs and finishing off mixes and and we'll master. So that's coming up. Um I've already written oh god, thirty or forty songs to choose from for the next album. So either late this year or early next year, I'll be back in the studio um, recording again. Uh, book a trip over to Nashville for early next year. I was going to say to you, are you are you going to try try getting over to America and doing something there? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Nashville. I think I'm heading over there in May next year. So I'm just going to I've got some contacts over there, and I'm just going to play as much as I can and uh, see what comes of that. It's always fun. I've been to Nashville before. It's always fun. There's plenty of music around. So, you know, it's, sometimes it's just nice to, to wander around and listen to music as well. So some yeah. great venues over there. One... So a fair bit... Yeah, go, go bit. on, Brendan. Go on. Yeah. No, no, I was just going to say, there's a fair bit happening at the moment. That's fantastic. Now, I just want to wish you all the best for the future. I don't have to wish you all the best for the future. I'm telling you now because I've been playing your music now for so long, mate. You won't believe. And uh, as soon as I listened to, to your voice, I just loved it. Absolutely loved the voice. So, listen, uh, I just want to congratulate you on all of it. But one thing I'd like to ask you, or a couple, one, couple of last questions, but one question you might, you, is right out of left field here. Just uh, take this question and tell me what you think. If you were sitting in a park on a bench, park bench, enjoying the, enjoying the sunshine and looking around, and you had one hour, one hour sitting on that bench to interview anybody dead or alive, who would you pick and why? Well, oh, gee, that's a hard question, Dom, because there's probably a thousand people I'd want to squeeze into that hour. But I think the first one that comes to mind, you always got to run with the first one that comes to mind, is Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. Oh, amazing. Because I, I just love the, the poetry in his lyrics and obviously he's got an amazing voice and the journey he's been on from from way back in the Led Zeppelin days through to now with all the stuff he's doing with Alison Krauss is it's just huge. It's just a massive journey. So I, I just think it'd be so... An hour wouldn't be enough, Dom. <laughs> I'd want a week. And you know, you know one thing I, I remember about I call I used to call them the Leds because I'm I'm seventy, yep. mate. I'm seventy this year, so I've gone through a lot of those areas where people, uh, you know, I've just loved every genre of movie. But what I loved about Led Zeppelin, they were so far ahead of their time. There was yeah. no no one was near them. No, they were unique. <laughs> yeah, when when the first album came out, I said, "What the hell has happened here? This is amazing." <laughs> Yeah, and the way they evolved was incredible too because they started as a blues-based band and I guess that was, you know, the root of their music all the way through but they went off on tangent, even country. They had some country stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I've listened to some of country, yeah. Yeah, and some of his, uh, some of his you know, his, uh, his albums on his own are fantastic. You know, like when he bought out one of those albums, it went straight to number one. It was great. I think the, pl the I don't even remember what that track was, but it was such a big track when it came out and that when the lead singer, you know, they'd split up and whatever. And the beauty about them is they never used to, they never used to be together all the time, did they? What they, what they do is they'd, they'd separate and then suddenly a year or something later, they come back and put out an album and it'd be crazy, and then they'd separate again. It was like they were they were weird that way, didn't they? They they didn't stay together all the time as a group. They just sort of <laughs> decided to, you know, leave the group, and then they came back again and put out another album. That's the way they used to do it when they... I, I remember it like that. Do you remember it different? No, no, no. That's exactly what they used to do, because I don't think they were very good friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but when they I'm come together, sure they were fantastic. I've, everything I've read suggest there was a lot of tension in the band so <laughs> um 
Yeah, so, but yeah, so yeah, that that'd be my choice. I'd sit there with Robert Plant. Okay, thanks very much, Brendan. Before I let you go, you've got to do a little promo for me, mate, because the thing is, I always play your music. So would have been great to, st- you know, I'll count you down one, two, and three, or whatever, and just say this is Brendan McMahon on a live ninety point five. That'd be fantastic if you can do that, so I can plug one of your tracks as soon as you do, as soon as you say it on air. But believe me, I play them all the time. But I'd love to have your voice before it to um tell the people that uh, you have been on a live 90.5, so I'll count you down. How about that? All right? Yeah, go for it. One, two, three. G'day, this is Brendan McMahon, and I'm on a live 90.5 FM. Really happy to be here. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks for your time, mate. Here's the latest track from Brendan McMahon. latest track it's good to be alive doing big things for him in the country charts and that was our very own brendan mcmahon thank you brendan for the few minutes you've given me this morning for the hit mix show 